The Dragon Lord Legacy, Chapter 3, Conflict Evening was fast approaching for Spike and his two mothers as they went back and forth on how to regain his memories while trying to adapt into a setting. Despite him gaining normal motor functions and understanding his biology a bit, he was still unsure of what he was fully capable of. The first was the use of his wings. He seemed to think of them as odd, feeling like he had never had them before. You didn't, his mama told him. Prior to your incident, you didn't have them. You went through your molting phase and gained them afterwards. He gave them a few flaps, not trying to fly, but mentally trying to understand his new ligaments. The skin membrane on his wings matched his belly scales, though a touch of light green blended at the edges. The actual wing bone sprouted from his two shoulder blades, and on the top of his wing, where it bent, had a large talon on top that he could weave or dab if he were to low enough to the ground or use it as an extra appendage to grab and hold onto things. The wing then curved down to a sharp tip, and the height was two-thirds of his body length with part of the top passing his head. The width of his wings were at least five and a half feet across, roughly a foot more than his height. In all, he had grown from a pudgy short two-foot dragon to a five and a half foot tall dragon. But during his molts, he also changed more than he realized. His scales were denser, much more rugged, and stronger. His mothers mentioned this to him as they were cleaning over his coma. You were soft-scaled, but not too soft, but neither were you able to handle so much. Now that you have grown, your scales will strengthen as you mature more. Plenty of meats and solid gems, maybe an occasional iron or two, will make you stronger than most hardened diamonds. His last most intriguing trait to come from his rapid molt in the eight months was his flames. He had sneezed yesterday, which was the first time he exhaled a flame in almost a year. However, instead of the normal emerald green fire and light green that he would exhale according to his mother's, he now had a brighter green and a standing white mixed yellow. He was also able to hold it for extended periods of time, but that? That was just the beginning. What I want to teach you, my son, began Cynthia, is how to harness and control your fire with not just your breath, but your body and your mind. With that, Cynthia brought one of her paws close to her maw. She then blew out a small flame and held the flame in her claw, closing her mouth and showing him the flame still burned upon her palm. His eyes lit up with awe, seeing his mother hold or cradle her red and piggish flame into her palm. The flame danced in her claws as if she had a source of energy or fuel keeping it there and burning. This, my son, this is how dragons control fire from within. This form of fire manipulation has it where you bend it to your will. Control it from a distance, on your body, to the temperatures, and so on. Fire breaking is the form of breaking the rules of normal fire, bending it, and using it for other forms. He watched as the flame continued to dance on her claws before spreading across her wrist. Slowly traveling up, once it reached past her shoulders, the rest of her body caught on fire and she ignited into a bright flame. Spike jumped in surprise at seeing his mama on fire, his own eyes lighting up in amazement and joy. He laughed at his mama, giving a little smile and danced lightly with her flaming body. She gave a little twirl, flashed her maid with a dance, and even spread her wings to show that they were also on fire, dancing above and below them in pink flames. With the raise of her right leg, she brought it down hard and the stomp extinguished her flames instantly. Her eyes gleamed as smoke continued to leave her body until it dissipated. That, my son, that is fire breaking. Oh, he said in awe, his eyes still wide with amazement, and a grin formed on him. So, any dragon can do that? He asked excitedly. Any dragon with fire in their blood has the potential to do it, his mother commented, sniffing her mate from afar. A smile formed on her, winking at her lover outside of her son's view, before looking down at him. Most don't pursue it because it could take years to decades and even centuries to fully master it. She is right, Spike, Cynthia furthered the conversation. Most think it's a waste of time, energy, and even believe it's useless, because why waste learning to control your flames when you could just spit it out from your mouth, she mocked. In sad and truth, firebreaking is a dying form, and I fear that eventually dragons will forget this in teaching their young. It's not just a form of controlling fire, but it's also part of the history. He nodded in understanding before perking his head. Did you teach any dragon how to use it? She nodded. Many have come and learned it from me. I, while not being the full master of firebreaking, am one of the few elders that can control it at a much larger level than many of the other dragons in the valley. She paused and leaned down. Ember, while not able to fully control it, is one of the few that I have taught to harness and master this ability. She can control it on a rough level only with her sight, but has gotten farther than many have before her. This piqued Spike's interest immensely. The subject of learning something as difficult as firebreaking and being able to show Ember might make it easier to talk to her next time. 
finding a proper topic and maybe regaining memories as well. Wait, did I know how to do this before? Well, with the way you were raised, I doubt that you were properly taught anything. She spoke before she could think, as Cynthia instantly regretted it. Elianza also feared the words that her mate just released, and she wanted to correct her, but it was too late. The way I was raised? He asked. I, I, I thought you both raised me. He then saw their faces flinch, and worry quickly filled his heart. You... you both didn't raise me? Bef before the incident? The two mothers quickly found themselves in a bind. Ember wanted him to regain his memories, including the ones about the ponies whom truly raised him. Their fears of him rejecting him, however, were the most upsetting parts of this, and Eliensa, being the one of the most intelligent dragons in the lands, decided to take this to a new approach. My son, um... Before you think that we are not, or never have cared for you, please know that what happened in the past, it happened in its own way. We may have not raised you, but after the incident, we took you under our wing to make sure that you recovered. She then leaned her head down to meet his eyes. I promise you that, whatever memories resurface, whatever past that you may uncover, we will always be there to help you move past it. We may have not given birth to you, that I am sure you are aware of now, but we still care for you as if you are our own. She will take care of you. Cynthia moved in as well. We want you to remember, but we also don't want you to be filled with pain or sadness if you do start to remember. His eyes looked into both of his mothers, for he could feel the truth coming from them. However, there was something more to this. His mind needed to expand and more to remember his past. You... you would talk to me in my sleep. He commented, slow but also clear voices of his mother's echoing in his mind. You both were there in the darkness, telling me about your lives and your roles. You told me about dragons, history, and life around me, yet you never talked to me about my past? Why? We had no idea that you did lose your memory, son. His mother answered truthfully. We were not aware that you would wake up with a blank slate, so to speak. The things that we spoke to you in your sleep, continued Cynthia, they were the things that we wanted you to know about us. Ember, prior to your incident, told us that you only had some basic understandings of dragon history. We talked to you about that. We spoke about how dragon culture continued and how we came to be now, and where the blood ties of dragons lie. Our history, your mother's and mine, were just what we did to become who we are an advisor, and a successor, our roles in dragon history and how we met. Spike understood all of that. Most of it, they repeated it to him in his sleep. He knew about dragon history, his memory was filled with that, but he was not aware of the history before his incident, before his own awakening of the day prior. Ember was a hazy vision and memory for him, and he couldn't remember his own youth, which troubled him greatly. Then the big question finally came to mind. So. Who were my parents? That left the two mothers at a terrible, uncomfortable silence. Spike saw their features in a wave of emotions, and especially their eyes. We... We don't know, my son. Elianza said sadly. I wish, I truly do wish I could tell you, but... We don't know. Your memories revealed that you were just left as an egg. I... I... I was abandoned? He asked in total disbelief. Tears formed at the end of his eyes, and he felt his heart quicken in pace. I... I wasn't even cared for before I hatched? And just like that, he went into a frenzy and a depressive state, and both of his mothers quickly tried to calm him down. Spike, Spike, calm down, please. We know that this is difficult for you, but you still have us. We can take care of you now. You never have to be alone again. He pushed away from them as he tried to remember anything of his past. He began to shake his head in anger, moving away from his mother's as they tried to ease him down. As he did, his mind began resurging back, waves of emotions and his memories hitting him. He was an egg. Screams of his birth mother echoed around him. Darkness until a warmth like the sun incomposing him. Then, a bright flash, unprocessed feelings and color filling his mind. Power unlike any other filling him. Then a purple-mashed face staring at him, along with a beautiful face of white staring at him with adoration. Ember's face staring at him, wonderful orange eyes looking into his own emerald ones, love radiating from her, and hope for them in the future. He then remembered him hurting her, pain because he hurt her, followed by anger and rage, 
his body experiencing agony like anything before. He screamed in pain as the memories began to tear at his mind. He dropped to his knees, claws trying to dig into his head, as waves of agony came at him, squeezing his eyes tight. Alienza, do something! He heard his mama scream. Spike then felt large claws lock around his body. He yelled in protest and tried to remove himself, doing everything that he can to dislodge himself. Pulling up to her face, Elienta finally spoke to Spike. Open your eyes, Spike! Spike managed to open them through the pain and saw his mother's deep purple eyes. Sleep! Sleep! Was all she commanded as they glowed brightly and just like that, Spike's mind went hazy before he slumped on her claws and fell asleep. The pain faded and he found himself softly breathing with his memories fading onto the back. They set him upon the sleeping area and allowed him to calmly rest while they moved away from him. Eliensa became to pace around the area in anger and sadness. She allowed him to be hurt, again. This time it was intentional and with it nearly sending him back into a deep sleep. Luckily, it was a soft one, but nothing ever really came easy. How could I have been so stupid? You are not the one who reminded him that he wasn't raised, nor hatched by us, Hermé continued, trying to take the blame. I slipped, and I told him that we didn't know of his past. Something that we both should have told him, something both of us should have mentioned as he woke. Then he would ask who raised him, Cynthia mentioned. He would ask about how he came to be here, and where he came from, and so on. As it is, we want to raise him right, not the way the equestrians had done so. But they are the reason that he is the way he is. They are the reason that he is kind, loving, generous, and so much more. I can only name a few dragons in my claws that have a personality like that. She sighed, and her mood dampened. Ember is right. We... We have to tell him of his origins, including how he was raised by the equestrians. Cynthia snorted in disdain, looking away from her mate. She didn't like how it was all true. He wouldn't be the kinder sweet Drick that he was now if it weren't for them but it would also be ill to forget their wrongful mistreatment of Spike. Should we tell him about how they raised him? Should we tell him of how he came for the sake of Ember? Eliensa hesitated, moving her head side to side. I feel as if right now it's... it's too much. He must be slow and remember his past. If we do it too quickly, it might overwhelm him, like right now. We need to do it at a rate that he could adjust to. Cynthia nodded, though she eyed her mate. Why not use... I'd rather... He not fully understand how I use my abilities to read or tap into the minds of others. She cut her off. If anything, the last thing I want him to reveal to the equestrians that dragons have magic and abilities outside of their knowledge. Plus, it makes others uneasy when I use them. Her tail wagged in annoyance and scratched the metal band around it on the floor. The bind is punishment as is. Cynthia understood, staying silent. She leaned down and brushed her snout against his body, sniffing him and making sure that he was still sound asleep. So, what do we do till then? Elienza shook her head. I feel the need to clear my head. I still feel angry at myself for making him sleep rather than calm him down. It was necessary. And also a risk. Bad enough that he's going to wake up with questions and answers I, you, or even Ember won't have. Why not tell the equestrians that he is awakened then? They would love to know that he has. Perhaps, but I doubt that they would understand that he had lost all of his memories. If the previous incident hasn't caused an internal turmoil, this will. What of Ember telling them? She forgot that Ember had been left with that knowledge. A soft rumble vibrated from her throat before responding. I believe that Ember won't tell them. She is smart enough to know that revealing Spike's memory loss may not help us. She then walked past her mate and headed to the entrance. I need to breathe. I just... I want some time to myself. She then turned her head to her mate. Perhaps I can find a solution for both of us. Cynthia nodded and blew a small flame from her maw to her mate. It wasn't meant to reach, but merely showed that she still cared for her mate. Eliensa smiled at the gesture, returning the kindle before walking out of the cave. Cynthia settled herself with Spike, lying on her belly and using her arms to encompass him, bringing his head closer to her arm. She then began to gently hum to him. <laughs> 